hi um sorry for the terrible angle right now obviously this is not going to be throughout my video um i completely forgot i'm literally about to edit this and transfer my footage but i deleted the intro and um yeah this is gonna be my intro i'm gonna be doing a thames review and um i will leave the i will leave the link to my thames series playlist down in the description box and i'm really sorry about this um but the video will be better quality um so let's just get on to this so for a week's break definitely go on the thames if you're looking for like a just relaxing time definitely go on the thames the thames is so beautiful especially in the summer when the when it's not winter and the water levels are higher um though obviously the thames is super wide so it's really good for me to learn to drive and i actually got pretty good at it um because the canals are obviously a bit thinner and if you head a bit this way then you'll hit into a bank and you head this way you'll head into a bush or something so the thames was definitely a really good place for me to learn and i learned a lot about driving and the thames was just so beautiful it was amazing um the first i'll tell you about some of the moorings how the locks were and just some tips about going on the thames so if you are going on the thames you will know what to do and where to go so just for some tips about going on the Thames and what you will need, you will first of all, when you get to the first lock, you will need a licence. Um, you can go on the Thames, I think you can get a three day licence and then you can get a seven day licence and that was about £59, £56 and it wasn't that expensive and we knew probably we couldn't do it in three days because that's just we're not like the ultimate cruisers <laughs> so um we bought a seven day license and it was perfect for us so on to moorings you can't just moor anywhere like the canal there are actually some restricted places and there are some official mooring places so the first place we moored was <clears throat> pangborn meadow um Pangborn Meadow was super beautiful. It was like there were fields and if you turn to your left um, There was a field and the dogs went crazy in that they loved it so much and um, It was really beautiful and the, also the Thames do have just like you can park at you well, not park But you can moor at the side of like at the end of farmers fields and I think that's what kind of it was with Pangborn Meadow but you could stay there you could stay there for one day for free but then um you have to pay or you have to pay for the first day and so you get the first day free and then you have to pay five pounds for each day up to three days so we just stayed there for one day because we obviously we do cruise every day um but definitely i definitely recommend going to bangwell meadow because it's so beautiful and actually if you go to your right there is a bridge and you can there i think there is a co-op or a little i think and we didn't do that because we were just staying there for one day um so and there were bollards so i was like super happy about that so we didn't have to pin in because like bollards <laughs> but i definitely recommend going to pangwell meadow um two more for your first or or like your first night or if you're going on the thames so then we went to Goring. Goring was actually quite um, cool. Um, it was more of the town centre. There were bollards again, and there were shops and some cafes. There was a Tesco's if you walked over the railway bridge and turned that way. There were some. There was a Tesco's, and there was also a few cafes. We went to one, and let me just say the cake was amazing. But <laughs> um so we went through a few cafes and a Tesco's and I just I'll put it in face. But Goring was really nice. I collected conkers and it was the same as Pangborn Meadow. You had to obviously you had to you get the first night free and then you have to pay five pounds per night up to three days. Um and you also have to register online I think on all the moorings. Yeah I'm pretty sure on all the moorings you have to register only the ones that you don't have to pay with i think yeah i'm pretty sure about that <laughs> um but um we definitely like goring it was a bit more towny for us um we definitely did like pangborn meadow because it was more in the middle of nowhere because we like middle of nowhere with our crazy dogs so um we stayed there for pang we're well, not pangborn goring for one day and then we moved on to wallingford then there is Wallingford. Wallingford was actually quite nice. There were bollards again, and that was amazing. It was a bit higher because we were a small little narrow, and there were giant cruisers. Let me just say, they were cute. Like, they were massive. Like, amazing. But 
they they didn't have so much trouble but we had to like jump up but Wallingford was still really nice there was waitrose charity shops and the cafes and the ice cream at the cafes let me just tell you they were amazing chocolate ice cream go it's amazing <laughs> um but i really liked it there there were, you had to pay let me have a look it was seven pounds per night and there weren't very good moorings in between wallingford and abingdon we because we thought when we were, when, before we left Wallingford we thought oh we'll stay here and then we'll just cruise a little bit the next day and not go all the way to Abingdon because we were a bit tired but um, we ended up all cruising all the way to Abingdon because they were either shallow or you couldn't moor there so um, if you're going to Wallingford be prepared to go all the way to Abingdon because it's like like there's a lot <laughs> It's like no moorings so be prepared not just do a little small middle cr mi little cruises um but wallingford was definitely nice and i definitely recommend it to stay there then there was abingdon abingdon was really beautiful um there weren't any bollards there but there were actually we were going to moor somewhere but then we moved up a little bit but the place where we were going to moor did have rings that, they were actually quite nice there but we wanted we went up there because it was a bit more like fieldy if that makes sense fieldy and the dogs it was better for them to run and um it was actually really nice at abingdon there was let me have a look what was there there were shops there were cafes and there was even a the heck? No. leisure center leisure center i might my, my my handwriting is terrible <laughs> there was a leisure center as well we were gonna go but my bike lock basically my bike and my bike lock wouldn't come off so a big plaza so we didn't get to go to the leisure center but we did get a few other bits there and it was actually really nice what did i get there was it oh the milkshake there was good and you can see kind of a theme here every time we move i get some sort of cafe treat i think this all ended at abingdon but it was still good. I still the, the milkshake was good. It was good. It was a Nutella. Let me just add a Nutella milkshake. Okay, back onto subject. Um, it was the exact same as Goring and Peng Pangborn Meadow. It was free for the first night. At, wait, hang on. Yes, get. It was free for the first night and then five pounds for three days i'm sorry that took too so long um but it's the exact same i'll put it on the screen so maybe it'll make a bit more sense and then my speaking but my hands are all over the place and now let's move on to oxford then there was oxford it wasn't the oxford on the canal it was the oxford on still on the thames and oxford was really nice there were were there rings i can't remember i think there were no there were rings yeah i think there were rings yeah i think there were rings there were rings <laughs> and um the oxford was actually really nice there was a mcdonald's i normally would generally walk to i would i would go to mcdonald's but i got a bit distracted by primark we don't get to see primark that often and i was so excited i even got like a few things i got some overalls and a few tops and this new york top it was amazing <laughs> but we didn't go to get to McDonald's, but it was very nice there. There was, there were like, those were other shops. There was an open outfitters, but it hadn't opened yet. But back on the subject, um, definitely go to Oxford, Oxford on the Thames, because it's really beautiful. And it wasn't actually a really long walk because we were right next to the bridge and we took the bus back. I felt incredibly sick, but yes. <laughs> and let me see. It was obviously the same as all the others. There was, you could say, stay, stay there for one free night and then pay set five pounds, five pounds for three days, for three up to three nights. And we and we actually stayed there for two days because we were so tired because we've been cruising like every day. We even did that on Abingdon as well. We stayed there for two days, but um, definitely recommend going to all these places, especially when you're cruising because um we just we, we loved all these spots they were really nice um so let's get on to some other things okay i'm sorry for looking down at my notes a lot uh, my 
can't I need to okay so <laughs> the locks are electric on the Thames and I'm really happy about that so I don't have to do really heavy locks um, most of them are manned but some of them aren't manned and if they're self-service but they're still electric they're not as hard um, but on the Thames locks you have to throw up your bow and your stern rope to the locky lockies and hold it so if you're going up we were going up so we like pulled ours up if you're going down you obviously have to hold it looser and I looked at the wall then but <laughs> um, the locks were also you have to switch your engine off in the lock um, I don't know why I think you just do but um, we switched our engine off in the lock so I think that's all the information you need to know about the lock and Susie's trying to knock my camera off <laughs> So now moving on to facilities, um, Abingdon and Cleve Lock had a hose for water but um, a couple of the water points you had to fill up with a jug and one of the water points we did actually fill up with our jug um, but luckily we didn't need that much water because we can last about 7 to 9 days with our tank but um, if you do have like a smaller tank or you have more people on board there are um, so obviously there are some hose and then you can be prepared to have to fill up with a jug and prepared to get a funnel or a DIY funnel, fun, funnel, out, out, out. And with Rubbish and Elson's, um, most, hang on, and some of the locks had Rubbish and Elson points, we definitely use the Rubbish and Elson points a lot, and I think they also, I don't know, some of them had pump outs, I'm not 100% sure with that, because obviously we don't have a pump out. Um, you probably have to look into that a bit more, but I know that there are rubbish and Nelsons in some of the locks. So I hope you like this video. Don't forget to give it a like, subscribe, and comment down below what you would like to see next. And obviously, and I will also put my my Thames series playlist in the description box down below. And obviously, this video could have never been made without this little pop up little thing. And also stay tuned for the end with bloopers. Um, it's only one blooper, but I thought it was a really cute little blooper. So, yeah. Um, see you later. Bye. So, now moving on to the facility. Now moving on to the facilities. Um, in Abingdon, there was a hose and a... Oh my... Susie! <laughs>